Hello, everyone. Happy Tuesday. Uh, coming at you on this fine Tuesday. The sun is shining. Thankful. Um, I got a new coffee froth. I don't know how frothy it really made it. You know, you zzzz and I don't know how excited I am by the coffee frother. So today, I know a lot of you guys ask me, you know, how do you handle emotions? How do you handle death? What if someone you know dies? So today I have kind of a different situation happening for myself. Um, we have a neighbor girl who is in high school and she died of cancer. She was a babysitter of ours for a while and um, just the sweetest kind of thing. And unfortunately, um, cancer just ravaged her body. And um, so last week she went to heaven. Um, but so today is visitation. So we're going to go see her and bring our kids to go see her and say goodbye and funerals tomorrow. Um, good morning, Mike. But typically if there's a death, I can go in funeral doctor mode and that's where my emotions can go to. Um, so this is one of those situations where I'm not playing the part of a funeral director. I'm not being helpful as a funeral director at all. And so I'm having to deal with emotions that I usually wouldn't. And it makes me kind of angry, not angry at anybody, but, um, the fact that I have to feel things once in a while, it's kind of like being a funeral director. Get, let me, lets me go in a safe mode um, when there is a death. And so I don't have to deal with and handle emotions. But once in a while I do, and I don't like it. So, oh, hey, hello from the UK. Thank you, Penny. I appreciate it. Hello, everybody. Um, so I had some great questions sent in. Things, uh, one of the viewers asked, what could delay a funeral? Crime investigation, family feud, other issues. We get all of the above. Sometimes the body may be um, held by the medical examiner for further testing or further investigation. So we may be delayed a little while. I've never had where it's delayed a long time. Um, so typically the person or parts of the person will be released pretty quickly. If it's an individual that maybe has been found after a long time, or they're part of a bigger, grander investigation, a serial killer or something like that, they may be held for even longer before they're released. Um, so that might be a situation that could be encountered. Thank you, everybody. Yeah, the, um, the her, her loss has been one been felt by many different school districts and community. And um, it was one that really brought everyone together because we prayed and hoped and, you know, wanted a miracle for her and her family very badly. So, um, yeah, certain things can delay a funeral. You know, I'm going to talk about this in an upcoming video um, that I should post soon about, you know, deaths over in like England because they are delayed weeks um, because the system is different. When the body is released to the funeral home, all this paperwork has to be in place before the funeral home can even have the deceased in their care. So it depends on the country and the situation, but there are a lot of things um, that can de delay release of the individual. Family feud, yes, could possibly not so much delay the funeral home getting the deceased um, here, but it would delay maybe the disposition if the family is debating on or, de, you know, fighting over cremation or burial, then things are on hold. Things are paused until everyone can come to a conclusion. So hello, everyone. Yeah, Lexi, weeks. So um, two weeks is a good average on when an embalmer will get a body to them from death. Two weeks. So very different system. How are honors for a veteran arranged and who makes them? So when it comes to veterans in America, there is, um, hey, you, nice to see you this morning. Um, there is uh, provided to every veteran a two to three person team from the branch of service that the individual served in that will come and um, fold the flag, play taps and present the flag. 
So you would send, if the family is handling the services on their own, maybe a memorial service or something, the family can set it up or ask the funeral home to help them. Um, And you would just submit the paperwork to um, the local or a national branch of that service or to the national, like an office of that service, and it'll get to the right person. If you've never done it and the family's handling it, it may take a few more steps because they don't know exactly who to contact, but hopefully the funeral home would give them the information so they could get things handled quickly. There are also local VFW, American Legion groups that will do the volleys, um, which is the firing of the guns. So that is only if they are available. That is not promised to every veteran. Um, so that's not always available for an honor guard to do that. Sometimes the local guys want to handle the folding and the presenting of the flag. And sometimes they don't want to touch it because they're older and maybe don't feel um, as comfortable doing it. So each you know town, each area has a different setup as to how they do it because of the situation um, that is in that area. Oh my gosh, Lexi, that's crazy. It always, that's so humbling when somebody's showing my video in their mortuary school class. Like, it's just crazy to me that that happens, but it's very awesome. Um, Do you have to work through special or unusual services, religion, organization, family tradition? Of course, you know, whatever the funeral that they want to do is what we want to provide. It's not up to us. It's not our choice what that individual is going to have for service. It's up to the family. You know, there's a few things we're going to probably say no to if someone wants like a Tibetan sky burial where we place the body on the roof and let the vultures come in. We don't really have vultures in our area. So that's not going to really feasibly happen anyway. But there's some laws against doing something like that. But that's what a Tibetan sky burial is. You basically break apart the body and the vultures come in and eat the body off the you know, rocks. And that's how the person is goes to burial in the sky. Um, so I have had somebody ask me about that. I think it was more trying to shock me, but I already know what that is. So it's not really shocking. Um, but I've done Buddhist and Muslim and all different types of services, um, not regularly because there's not huge groups of different religions um, that I encounter all the time, but I've definitely had some exposures, some different things. I do like when things are different. I do like when I get to do Native American services and do get to have some exposure to different cultures. I think that's good for us just as humans to get to understand that our way is not the only way and our way is not what is tradition anymore because each group and subgroup within our society has their own traditions. Just like what happens at your family for Thanksgiving is going to be different than my family at Thanksgiving. Even if we're, you know, in the same demographic, same visual, same everything, we're going to have different traditions in our day-to-day lives Um, So when you factor in religion or other bigger things, definitely going to have much different um, traditions. Thank you guys for all your sympathy posts. Yes, I am 100% for water cremation. I think it's just an amazing process. And I think um, the fact that it's so sterile and takes much less energy sources. I love it. So there's not even a question in my mind. Why are flowers sometimes left on the casket before it's lowered into the vault? It's family choice. Um, there, once in a while I see that like the whole casket spray is left on the top of the, the casket and put down in the vault, but usually the family will pick apart the casket spray, maybe throw some flowers in on top. I think it's just symbolic. Flowers are the oldest funeral tradition that is known. Um, When you go back to one of the first burials of a person ever found, there were flowers in the grave. That's just a tradition that's older than than anything in the business practically. Um, It's just a show of respect and love and 
dignity. Um, so it's just something we do. I think that a lot of people don't even know why they do it. It's just something they've done and their parents did and their grandparents did and just tradition again, um, as part of it. Um, reading through my questions that you guys have sent to see which ones I haven't answered yet. Um, I went to a Navajo funeral burial and they shot the guy's horse. Yes. So I've heard about this and I would not want to be there when it happened, but in some native American cultures, um, burying the kind of the warrior's horse with them is a thing. Um, I, I'm not cool with that in terms of like my personal, um, Beliefs, but I understand that that's their tradition and what they do. I just would not want to be witness to that part of it. Um, to me, that would be very just personally hard, obviously. Um, yes, that is a thing. Have you ever had anybody bury cremains in a casket rather than in an urn? I have, I've had people place cremated remains in with a full body burial, like a husband was cremated and then they place his urn in with the wife when she's going to be a full body burial. I've never buried a whole casket with an urn in it. I do, however, have somebody I know that wants to, for their funeral mass, be in a casket, their cremated remains in a casket so that it's more of a traditional mass with the full pall over the casket and everything. Um, so I have had that request. Um, what happens if a fire breaks out during a cremation? As Mike says, um, grease fires can happen, can be very dangerous. Uh, I do, I do, we have had a local crematory that burned down. Nobody was in it at the time it burned overnight. Um, I, I don't know what you mean, what happens to like the body or, you know, they would go in and retrieve what they could from the retort because that body is still going to be inside the retort. Um, you can bury your cremated remains in your own yard. The law is with cremated remains that you can scatter or bury on private property with permission of the property owner. So if you're burying them on your own yard, that's your right. <coughs> so in the funeral business, um, C. Parker is asking why water cremation is not legal in all the states yet. Why, why can't it be done? It takes a long time for things to change within any industry, especially when it comes to a industry or a product that creates waste of some sort. So environmental and, you know, you have to have all these different organizations overseeing and giving a stamp of approval and legislature and nothing happens quickly. You can't just make a phone call and get an okay from one person. It takes a huge process, process to get things done. Um, and so just like with regular cremation when it started or any of these other things you see like composting and um, even natural burials, that's you've got so much regulation and so much political hoop jumping and hurdles that that's why everything takes so long now. I don't recommend any kind of a casket. Um, it is personal choice what you want. Some people feel more comfortable with the sealed casket because they want that enclosure for their loved one. Some people just want a simple box. It's personal choice. There is no good, better, best. It is what do you want for your loved one in your time? End of story. That's how I believe. Dennis is asking, what is the average cost of having a body transferred from a foreign country? How long of a time frame? It depends on the country. Um, you have to go through the embassies or the consulates or, um, you know, whatever the term is for them. And um, so you need the passport of the individual. You need to get 
permits and you have to get, you know, this uh, talk to a funeral home there and go through things. So sometimes we have language barriers. Sometimes we have nobody on the ground. On the other side, I had an individual we had to bring back from, I think it was Cambodia. Um, and two weeks in, we still hadn't even had him. He wasn't even in the process of coming back. Um, he had been murdered over there. Um, there was no family there. So we weren't dealing with anyone there. I kind of that was speaking for that individual. All we had was I had the police, I had the funeral home, I had, you know, the embassies and such and trying to handle all of it via phone and fax and email and time differences. That's a huge thing. You know, if I'm over here during work hours, I'm trying to connect with them during evening or middle of the night hours. So trying to do that, it all just takes time. So it really depends the country and the situation and if you have somebody on the ground over at that place. Um, so cost-wise, it shouldn't be huge. It's going to be the cost of a flight and the container to send them in. Um, so it's not a huge cost more. Sometimes they do charge for permits on the, um, the other end, but it just depends. Have you ever had a casket fall during a viewing or while the casket was being carried? Oh, Ryan, knock on some wood. No, not yet. Um, not yet. Uh, I do always, there's sometimes I get nervous where maybe we have a really, um, uh, it's called a cloth covered casket. And it's simply that it's um, a very basic cardboard with covered in cloth and there's handles on it and those come oversized. They're only being held together by glue and a few staples. So when you place like a four or 500 percent pound person in one of those caskets, which has happened and you're carrying them at the cemetery and things, that is when I've been most concerned about like the bottom breaking out or the handles falling off, something like that, because the material is not as durable as the weight of the individual. And that's when I have been concerned. So typically I won't have that person be carried very far. I'll leave them on the church truck or on the cart as long as possible, just because it makes me super nervous. Um, and I don't want there to be a moment like that. I would, I would just, it would be just the most horrific if somebody fell out of the bottom of a casket or a casket tipped over. It would just, I, I can't even imagine that as a family. Why does it take so long to get autopsy revolts back? Because they have to go out for toxicology. Um, and it can take, it depends on where the lab is and how backed up the lab may be. So it can take um, two to three months sometimes for those results to come back. Once the results come back, then the medical examiner has to read the results and factor those into the physical results that they found during the autopsy. So if you're looking at a situation where maybe the person was on drugs and there was some trauma, they then have to figure out if the drugs played into the trauma, if the trauma played into the drugs, how everything interacted together. Sometimes it's really straightforward and sometimes it's not at all. If there's a legal um, issue as well, maybe there's a, a lawsuit or there's a trial or something of that nature, they're gonna take a lot more time as well because they wanna make sure all their ducks in a row before they come to a final conclusion. Could you speak on embalming and what exactly the fluid does to the tissue? Once you embalm, are you able to move arms, legs, etc.? Big question, Jake. Um, so embalming fluid works by the gas that comes out of that fluid permeating out into the tissue. So you want to get that fluid to as many spots in the body as possible because then the gas from the formaldehyde goes out into the tissue and, and preserves. Um, and that's how it gets out into the tissue and doesn't just stay in the, the veins and the arteries. Now, there's different types of fluids. There's glutaraldehyde, formaldehyde base. There's some that have more organic, um, not that those are, those are organic chemicals, um, but things that are maybe not as... Um, not dangerous. Yeah. Dangerous to nature, I guess you could say. Um, but they don't work as well 
uh, for long term. You know, they they'll do maybe a short term preservation, but um, glutaraldehyde the body is going to be really soft for a while, and then all of a sudden firm up. Formaldehyde is a pretty um, quick response where the body is going to firm up pretty quickly. However, the next day you may go in and the body is loose again because there's so many things within humans right now. We're walking medicine cabinets. We die with so much medicine in our system sometimes, especially if you've been, you know, chemo and radiation and um, any other slew of different things that you're taking this whole huge medicine cabinet full of medicine for before you die. We can do what we typically would do, but then all this stuff that's already in your system counteracts the embalming fluid. So it, it's this huge thing that we can't do a chemical equation for because we can't factor in everything that's in your system because we have no idea what's in there. Um, and so we really don't know if what we do is going to last a day or a week or however long. All we can do is the best we can with what is in front of us at the time and hope for the best outcome. So if we come in the next day and the person is loose, we can then do some more steps. Um, but it's, it's not always foolproof because we are up against now all these different scenarios from all this different medication that people are on. Um, and that has really changed what we do as embalmers. Thank you guys. You know, that day in the life video, it's kind of blowing my mind. I thought it was so super boring because I wasn't doing much, especially the first day. So I tried to just show you around and stuff. I've gotten more positive comments about how great that was just to see where I'm at, you know, on a given day and see what I'm doing. I want to always show more. I want you to see how I make arrangements and, and see how I take care of individuals. Um, and I can't show you guys that because it's such private moments with families. Um, but I've had so many great, great feedback. So thank you guys. I'll try and come up with some more of those. Yes, there is no law in Michigan on embalming. There is a rule um, that there's a 48 hour rule that some funeral homes will try and tell families that that's a law and it's not a law that within 48 hours, you should be buried, embalmed or cremated. Um, but it's not a law. It is just a rule that's kind of out there to go by a uh, it's something that, you know, try and do within 48 hours, one of these things, but it's not a law. Um, so I prioritize when the body's kept in cold storage. Why is embalming necessary? Um, it's not necessary for keeping the body around or something like that. It's more for um, preservation, for viewability, for public visitations. Or if your family's coming in a week or so later, being able to know that that person is going to be viewable. We can't control so much. We can only control so much. Um, and so if you don't want mom's face to be super purple and blotchy or, you know, purging or bloating or things like that, we need to do certain steps to ensure that that's not going to happen. So it's, it's just one of those, there's, there's gamble and there's a little more certainty. Um, yeah, JW, the cloth co covered, which is used a lot. Um, so water cremation, it's this big tube and it fills with water. Go check out my water cremation video, walks you through the whole thing. Um, it's sometimes called, called resonation, um, aquamation, different, goes by different terms, but it's a tube filled with water. The body's placed inside a basket in there. Lye chemicals are put in circulated around for about seven hours. And what is the result is a liquid that goes down the drain, which is basically all of your tissue is liquefied, which is what happens during decomposition. And then a skeleton is pulled out, which is what is the result of flame cremation as well. And then that skeleton is broken down into cremated remains. So it's kind of the same final process, but my own passing. So this changes, but it's been pretty much the same for a while now. Um, I would like a natural burial at this moment, I think, but it's not really up to me. What does my family need? That's the only question to me that should ever need to be asked. What does my family need? If I am dead, I am dead. 
What do they need for them to go into their next part of their life? Do they need, you know, if I I was choosing direct cremation, do they need to never see me again? Do they need to not have a service? Do they need to not deal with the death? A lot of times, no. Um, Let the family choose what they want to do with you after in terms of, you know, services and viewing and such. If you really want to be cremated at the very end of everything, great. If you really want to be buried at the very end, great. Let your family decide. I'm sorry, but I feel very strongly about that. It's not about what I need because I'm dead. It's about what your family needs to do in their moment to get through to the next phase of their life because they're the ones that have to continue on without you. So Remember, they have to be factored in. Don't impart your thoughts and beliefs on not wanting to service and everything on them because they're the ones that have to continue on. That's my soapbox. I'll get off it now. Um, Thank you, Brandy. You're so sweet. Hey, Carrie. So good to see you on here. Um, That was a great tour. Sorry, guys. I know there was a question. I was going to try and grab it. I learned so much more about the funeral process. Lost many family members. Would a deceased retired police captain who died in natural causes? Um, most of the time, the police will provide a flag. We cannot get a flag from the government. The station can provide a flag, though. Um, it's military is the only that we can get a flag from the government for um, with a special form. So there's no um, retired police officer form for us to get a flag from, but we flags can be gotten like by the police and such if they would like. Yes, a sealed casket can explode just like anything on with pressure and buildup of gases, it can explode. How do you involve someone involved in involved in a crack stick? The same way you would involve balm anyone else. Um, you just preserve what's in front of you. Um, if they're autopsied, which they most likely would be in a car accident, you would inject all the different legs and arms and heads separately and treat the tissue and the cavity. So all the same. Thank you guys. I'm trying to, I've gone through, I think all my questions that I had in front of me from Last week, if I missed yours, make sure you submit it again. I always am trying to catch up and answer questions. Um, I'm working on some things. It's uh, African American History Month, February, um, Black History Month. So I'm trying to work on some videos, getting them to get done for this month. Um, Just some history of, you know, funerals within the culture and, um, African-Americans within the business and how that's changed and evolved. I think it's really important to focus on that, um, especially during this month and kind of, you know, pinpoint some different things within that culture from way back as it, you know, was, was changed over time. So I think it's really important. What are your thoughts on taking a body to a home overnight after a rosary, then picking them up for the morning service? I'm happy. You know, if somebody wants to take home their loved one, yes, I think it's wonderful. That's how it always was. Things were in the home and we took care of our own. And now it's, we've turned into this hands off as if something's wrong with the deceased just because they've died. So I am all for people taking home their loved ones. My mom wants to donate body to science. She's not a healthy person. I feel a need to say goodbye with finality. And I don't believe donating body will provide that. Isn't it just a few years later? Um, It depends on the school, Jillian, that she donates to. One, whether they'll accept her body or not, um, depending on her condition. Um, Two, kind of uh, how long. Sometimes it's a month. Sometimes it's two years. Sometimes it's three years. And then you'll get back their cremated remains if you want them back. Um, So read over the paperwork from the school she wants to donate to whether or not um, she will be able to be accepted. She can get pre-accepted and you can find out ahead of time um, if she's already not going to be able to be accepted with her current state um, and read over the paperwork as to what they do with her body. If you're not comfortable or if she's not comfortable with what they're going to do, it's not just for the medical school. 
Um, the body parts can be sent out for all sorts of other things. Um, some people are not comfortable with that. So make sure you read the fine print um, as to where she's going to be donated. So the gut, death, gurgle, moan. Um, bodies do not sit up ever, 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 ever. No. Um, the death, gurgle, moan is something that happens prior to death. That is something that is talked about when people are dying. There's a death moan or gurgle. Um, yes, bodies sometimes can emit a sound if air is still in the lungs and they're moved and the air is forced out over the vocal cords, a sound can be made. It is not a moan though. That is a forced, you know, something somebody does, um, but a sound can be made. If someone passed away and they were in the military, they would get a flag. Um, they would need to have an honorable discharge paper you cannot get a flag without the discharge. So if someone was in the military and were honorably discharged and they have no paperwork, we cannot get a flag. Um, we have to have that form to do it. Um, one more. Yes, uh, cremated remains are bone. So there are going to be some chunks. If she wants them to be less chunky, she can go back to the crematory and they can cremulate the bone down more into a finer powder, um, grittier type substance. So if there's like one or two larger chunks, she can go back to the crematory and they can help her with that. Um, aspirating through the nose. If there is, um, if they need to puncture up into the brain to aspirate the brain, you can do that. Or there's a, the nasal aspirator, it's curved, and you push, put that down in the nose. It goes down into the back of the nasal and into the throat to suck out fluids that might purge out um, is typically the number one. So I'm going to cut this off. Thank you guys so much. So many questions. Uh, you guys usually get rolling about 20 minutes in, and then the, tw then the questions start. It's always good. Thank you guys, and I will see you next week. Bye.